I don't know. But I was thinking of everybody this morning. Really? Well, we always go to Gallegos after Mass. Did anybody bring you to the Lord today? Oh, yeah. Oh, that's good. Oh, yeah. As a matter of fact, <laughs> Father Frank Lopez oh, came so and anointed me. And it was a surprise. Uh, Rosie, my sister Rosie, works there at Mother Cabrini, where Frank is. Uh, we call him Frankie porque he, she went back to work and Father Frank said, I thought you were going to go with St. Margie. And she said, I couldn't find parking. I just could not find parking. And I can't walk, you know, long distances. Well, don't worry about it. I'll, I'm going to that part of town, I'll stop by. And he came back and he was so sweet. Oh. He anointed me and gave me communion, and, and uh, we, we prayed, and when it was just a wonderful experience. I don't know who St. Pius is sending to that hospital calls now, but they've, they've been coming. The different, uh, you know, women take Thursdays, Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays, and they do the hospitals. And I know them all, of course. Yeah, I. Well, I don't know. thank God you don't need, you don't need their services. Yeah. <laughs> True. But they've been bringing me communion every day. Because I know I haven't seen Father Cuevas. Um, he only did one morning mass in two weeks. So I don't know if he's if that's his duty to go to, to the hospitals. Well, the other priests do what they do. I don't know nothing. Me, me, me too. So I was no, telling Father Mariano tells today. Me well, I was telling Father Mariano. I said my my work. We usually start at eight o'clock, so morning mass is not a problem, and I love it. But now they said, okay, seven forty-five. This is I received communion. I gotta go. I can't even wait. And I asked Father today. He said, if you're going to work, that's fine. But if you're just leaving on purpose early for Mass, there's something different there. And he said, so just go. I said, but here's the problem. They're going to start us at 7.15, possibly, in the next couple of weeks. So that kills Mass I don't, for the morning. So he goes, Mass. It's the same Mass. It's, it's when I, I finally experienced that when we went to Europe. Yeah, well, Uncle Ray and I for our 25th wedding anniversary. And they have so many beautiful churches there. Beautiful. Starting with Notre Dame in Paris. And no matter where we went, different languages. And uh, we knew what was going on. We knew the prayers, everything. So it's the same as whether it's Spanish or French or and when we went to Lourdes, that's another thing your Uncle Ray surprised me with. Because when we were making plans to go to Europe for our 25th, he says, this is not going to be a pilgrimage. <laughs> you know, we're going as tourists and we're going to see this man. And I want, we went, uh, he didn't tell me this at all. But one day we were getting on the speed train. I don't know if you've ever noticed it. Uh, in, in France, they have a train. Yeah, bullet. Mm -hmm. That goes pew. Really? I don't know how many miles per hour it goes, but it goes so fast. And we were there before you knew it. And it where are we? I'm telling you. <laughs> You're in Lourdes. Ah, que suave. Mm -hmm. I thought this was not going to be a pilgrimage. Oh, wow. And it was the most beautiful experience. Again, all these languages, all the languages. And, uh, but they had different priests that would come with the groups and they would say mess in German or they would say mess in French or whatever. And there was always one in English. We got a, a, a bishop or an archbishop from Ireland who was saying the Mass, you know, when we got there. So that was a, a blessing. And um, 
it was, I went into the baths. You've heard of the baths? Mm -hmm. In Lourdes? Yes? No? no. Yeah, I have the, the healing baths. St. Bernadette? The, the healing baths? The story of St. Bernadette? Not totally, no. Really? She was picking sticks, and she went, and, and the Virgin appeared to her, and she just, they, they didn't speak, but she prayed the rosary, and then she knew to come back, so she came back, and this time the Virgin told her to dig, and so she began to dig. To dig it. And also spring. to eat the weeds and yeah. drink the muddy water. She was very sickly, Bernadette was. And then the, 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 that, it just started filling up. That's, that's a lot of mud. Nobody knew there was a spring there. Yeah. And she started digging and digging. And then the, uh, our lady told her to eat of the, of the greens that were there. And the only thing that she saw was a lot of weeds. <laughs> so she started eating the weeds. <laughs> And everybody started to say, she's going crazy. Yeah, they probably herbs. I mean, they probably. just don't know how to do I don't know. It was weeds, what she was eating. You know, just like, it was just mud where the lady had told her there was water, there was a spring. Anyway, The Song of Bernadette is a movie that maybe you ought to look at. It's beautiful. It's black and white. And she told her to build, that she wanted a church to be built there. So they built a grotto, and that's where she originally appeared. It's very beautiful. Very interesting story, very interesting. And she was persecuted, you know, her mother didn't believe her, the priest didn't believe her, nobody believed her. And she just kept going back to pray with the mother. She kept going back. What was the one that we watched? Not last night, but the one. With, she had an abusive husband and her sons, and... And she wanted to be a she wanted to be a nun after her husband got killed. And they 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 told her no. And the roses grew on the vine. Yeah. No. Um, Cecilia. Who is this? Cecilia? Recently. Yeah. Recently. Yeah. The one. Oh yes, yes. Yeah. That was really beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. And they they until the very end asked him to do to defy his Christianity. Didn't they mock crucify him? They hung him on a cross. I don't know. I didn't I, see the video. I, I heard that they hung him on a cross, and they were saying, "This is what you're professing, and this is what we want you to denounce." And they had him on a cross, and they were beating him before they beheaded him. I don't know. I I, I heard that from a, in a sermon on EWTN. I can't remember the priest that was giving the sermon, but he was he had the information he was reading. Who is this? The one that was beheaded the before first one. he was beheaded. When they found out he was doing oh. the rosary like like this, and they ended up teaching it. Uh -huh. And they told him, you better stop, because they're Muslim. And he kept doing, and they told him, you better stop. And then they so to teach him a lesson, they didn't nail him to the cross, but they hung him on the cross. Mm -hmm. And they said, this is what happened to your God. This is what happened. And you denounce him, and they, he would not. And then they, they caught him again, doing it more. And they said, that was enough. And that's when they took him and did what they did. Modern day saints. Yep. Modern well, we were watching last night, but Bakia, uh, Saint, Saint Bakia, the African slave. Uh, oh yes. We were watching that last night. He was really like a butler at one point in time. He, he was a slave. No, it was a she. It was a she. A she. Yes. You think yes. Martin de Porres? No. They, no. They put him. They had brought her from Africa, and this man had saw her, and anyway, she had a lion pass by her, right by her, and she grabbed its mane and she pulled the hair off and the lion just looked at her like whatever. And she's you know, in, in, in the bush or the egg, whatever. So she went and showed it to I guess the high priest of the tribe and he gave her I guess a blessing of like, a prophet, I guess you're you're you were uh, like a child of the of nature. nature. And so then they got enslaved and this man purchased her mm -hmm. yeah. and bought him. He was a he was a very wealth, wealthy man, and she was doing all all works of kindness in the house. And he had a very sickly daughter who was born and wasn't supposed to be born. The doctor said, oh, "We're going to kill the baby to keep you alive," and the mother said, "No, keep the baby alive and kill me." And so they, they, that's what happened. So this black lady became like a mother 
to this girl, and... Well, you bought her, you brought it back to, I think it was, it could have been, what, Italy? I don't know where it was. Venice, somewhere like that. Uh -huh. So he, she was, he but was But when they brought her, you know, they never seen a, a colored person. No. And they were... Oh, that was terrible. Yeah. They were like, they would, they would touch like, her, and they were like, oh, she's not dirty. And they were like making fun of her and Yeah, have you seen children. 12 Years a Slave yet? No. Have you seen it yet, Navarrete? 12, 12 Years a Slave? Yes. Oh, that's good, sir. That was something else. That was a but the that end of that movie, everybody got oh, yeah. out real yeah. quiet. Yeah. It was, it was the, very the, impressive. The, the Diablo Negro, they were calling her that, and all this stuff. Well, anyway, she she was doing all these things and and then helped the little girl who was, who was told that she was sickly and couldn't go outside and stuff and she the saints are so oh my gosh they're interesting well, really, I get the Colin he's my anti-Catholic person and he's like oh you're going to keep reading about these people <laughs> <laughs> like, you're going to keep reading about them until you like it and Isabel kept reading she was reading uh, St. Bernadette, because she kept calling it St. Benedict, and I was like, it's not the same person. And then finally, she gets like halfway through the book report, and she'll say, this is so interesting, this is so interesting, and like Martin de Porres, I think he read it in like one day, she read it in two. As soon as they start getting to That's it, also a very interesting very, story, very isn't it? Very interesting. So they're all the And then there's modern day saints like you guys. Ah, and you... No, You're yes. I, I, I wanted to be a saint, that's what I wanted to be. And then, the following day after I made the decision, I would do something. God doesn't want a saint like me because of this and that. And then the third day I would say, no, I want to be a saint. The following day, it was a losing battle. And I said, well... <laughs> Yeah, they say I guess I'm not going to make that. The definition of a saint is that you never give up. You so, never give up. You never give up. I, I heard all saints were great sinners, mm -hmm. and that gives me a chance. Yeah, there you well, go. Well, everybody, when people say, 